So, you know, I grew up in New York. Uh, my parents moved us to Arizona when I was 11 years old. Uh, my dad would actually say, uh, I moved you here to play baseball year round. As I started to play in these travel teams, I really started to no notice myself like, hey, I'm standing out above everyone else. Uh, coaches are talking about me. Got to high school ball and, and as I was getting through high school, I started to get scouted heavily. I went to Arizona State. My freshman year, I got to the point where I was like, oh, I can party and not go to class, you know, and, and, and have a life that I wasn't used to. You know, I grew up with two alcoholic parents. I get to ASU and now it's like, you're an adult, you can take care of yourself. And I remember just going off the edge. I literally spent my first semester partying every night. Uh, got so bad that I was ineligible. Um, for, the, for my sophomore year going into it, I had to take summer class. I transferred out, went to a junior college over here in uh, Gilbert, and then I, I, I turned pro in 2001, got drafted by Milwaukee in the ninth round. And that's when kind of like baseball started. Then it was my job. It was no longer like, hey, you're gonna do this for fun and, and go out and, and do what you want on the side. This was a job. But after my first year, I got hurt and I missed almost that whole season but during that course of the time I was a guy that threw 91 to 94 in high school but when I got back from that surgery I was throwing 100 and the organization was kind of like well who's this guy and where did he come from uh, life was kind of spiraling out I was definitely partying way more than I was focusing on playing but still throwing 100 so the team had this obligation to keep me or to trade me. So they ended up trading me to Houston. Um, at that time, my wife and I were just dating, went to Houston, played there for the last month of the 2007 season and went off. Then I got to that off season and you know, they're talking about me possibly being the closer the next year. They were gonna trade Lidge away. They were gonna trade Qualls away. And then I get traded to Baltimore in a five player deal for Miguel Tejada. 2009 off season, I go to Mexico to play winter ball because I'd missed so much time. I needed to get some innings in feel good had a really good time there and, and did well and the team was excited well i get to spring training in 2010 with baltimore and i am throwing i literally can't even throw it to the catcher the balls are bouncing in the ground uh chad moeller was the catcher and he's looking out at me a guy who used to throw 100 now i'm throwing 81 maybe you know the balls are bouncing into home plate and i i'm i go home i'm telling jada i'm like this is it so i was gonna go there if they released me they were gonna have to pay me anyway so I was kind of like, well, I think this is probably it. And I'm sitting there in Norfolk, Virginia, and I'm playing catch in the outfield. And all of a sudden I felt a pop in my shoulder and I'm like, oh no, like that's it. And so I kind of take some time off. Mike Griffin was my pitching coach there. And he's looking at me like, you all right? You need, you, you, you want to do this? And so I, I yeah, I, I think I'm all right. It just kind of hurt for a second. Well, I start to throw and I'm like, wait a second. That's, that's a little bit harder. You know, and it's getting, every throw I make, it's getting harder and harder. Where I start the game, my first pitch was 99. And I'm like, what is going on? So they're looking at each other and I'm kind of looking in the dugout like, <laughs> I went all spring training throwing 81, 82 miles an hour. How is this happening? Um, I finished the game, top out of the 100, and I'm the closer that year. And I'm, I saved 20 games. And I remember them coming to me and saying, hey, we're gonna call you up at the end of the year again. And I, I remember during that season, the Hiroshima Carp wanted me to come to Japan and I had played with Koji Uehara and he told me you would be a great fit in Japan, you should go. And I knew there was a chance to make money there. Um, am I at the end of my career? You know, I'd already played 10 years in the States. You know, I'm a guy that has a bad rap, a partier, throws hard, but doesn't do well all the time, had a couple good years. And so the, the Orioles shut it down. They say, no, we're paying him enough. He's not, we're not selling him to you guys. So. I knew that if they put me on the roster at the end of that year, I was gonna be back on the 40 man and I couldn't do what I, I couldn't be a free agent. So my agent begged Andy McPhail, don't put him on the roster. He wants to go to Japan, let him go. And they did, uh, they, they let me go. So I became a free agent in 2010. Started talking to Hiroshima that off season, signed to go to Japan in December of 2010. And uh, 2011 started my journey over in Japan. Growing up Catholic, no faith, um, church, Christmas and Easter, um, had no idea why. Yes, I, I considered myself Catholic, but no idea why I needed 
Jesus as my savior. Um, I was a good person. Yes, I did bad things, but overall, I never killed anyone. I never uh, did drugs. I wasn't, you know, doing all these just nasty things that you hear about. Um, so why do I need this, this guy who lived this perfect life and died for us on a cross, um, even though I was baptized, confirmed in the Catholic faith? Uh, using Bible study or using um, chapel on Sundays during my time in the States was this, I think God using that in a way to bring me to him, but I think it was a, a point to see this false reality of what I had, that God was this genie in a bottle or this rabbit foot that I was holding him in my back pocket. Like, yeah, I'm, I'm a believer because I got baptized once, I got confirmed once. Um, I'm gonna use God when I need him, but he's in this box over here and I'm gonna live my life here. And when I need him, I can just kind of reach in there, grab him and then put him back in there. And so I had a teammate, a Christian teammate, Andy Mitchell, who I still talk to today, uh, he was real with me, you know, it wasn't, you know, I saw a lot of Christian athletes that were, would claim Christ that were doing the same things I, were, I was doing. So what separated them from me? Like, why do I need your God if I'm doing the same things you're doing? Why do I need that? It was Andy that would sit down with me and, and, and be real with me and tell me things and, and show me things and the way he treated his family, the way he lived every day at the field. God can hit, a, he'd make a straight shot with crooked sticks. And I believe he uses certain people in your life to bring you closer to him. It might be an atheist that God uses to bring you to him. It might be cancer. It might be a trial. It might be so many different things that God will use to draw you to himself, to see my journey start and like, okay, I, I call out for God. And then there's some downs, but it was like right away, he would like draw me to someone else that would, then that person would, help me in my path and then it would be someone else and then it, would, it was just jumping from people to people. It was almost like God saying, okay, you're, you're ready now. No more like spiritual milk, you're ready for food. Like you need to start living out your faith. And it's hard, you know, it's hard to go and speak publicly on something where you don't know if you're gonna be accepted. So God gave me this status and he was using me. So then I, I'm speaking on fruits of the spirit, I, I'm going around and you know, still can't talk about God and, and that's killing me. But that season again, we, uh, we had an unbelievable season as a team. We were in first place by 10 games at the All-Star break and ended up finishing in second to Otani and the fighters. We tanked it. We lost like 19 out of 22 games at one point. But I ended up finishing with 43 saves. So now I've broken my save record again, but I lost seven games. I was 0-7, I lost seven tie games. I came in the tie game seven times, lost all seven. That off season, I remember having an interview and I, I took full responsibility. Like if I wouldn't have lost those seven games, we would have finished in first. So uh, it's on me, I'll come back next year, I'll do better. I show up to spring training rejuvenated, ready to go. And from the first pitch in spring training, I felt like something's different. Arm was stronger. Everything was just stronger. I felt ready, uh, rejuvenated. I, mean, I went through spring training cake, no runs given up. Uh, start the season off, I'm pumping, you know, 158, 159, which I'm getting older now, I'm 37, but my velocity is getting, you know, grow, going up with me as far as average. I was still hitting 100, but with my average, I was like 94, 95. Well, now my average is like 97, 98. I set the foreign uh, save record. Mark Kroon held it before I beat him. Um, I think it was 188 saves at that career wise. Um, we go on the road, end of April starts and my wife is turning towards the worst where she can't get out of bed. She's gone to the hospital multiple times. It's all heart related injuries and, and stuff like that. So now I'm like, I gotta go home. Like I gotta tell the team who I love that I need to go home because I love my family more. And God put me in charge of my family. So I need to be there. And I remember going into the office and saying, hey, my wife's really sick. She's in the hospital. I'm gonna have to get her uh, over to Beverly Hills to get some stem cell. I need to go home. And right away they're like, okay. And I was blown away. Like, wow, you know, like, I, why would you show me this luxury or this, this love and this, uh, uh, you know, this luxury of being able to leave where I never saw another player get that kind of treatment. So they say, you can go home for 10 days. And I said, I'll take it. 
And I remember telling the team, you know, I'm emotional. I'm thinking about my wife, my children. I have three kids at this time. And so I'm home, Jada gets her treatment. I have to take them back here to Arizona. Um, and now I got to leave again. And I'm not going to see her or my children probably for five months. I remember leaving and being like, this is miserable. I get back to Japan. Uh, they give me some innings to get ready. And then they put me back on the roster. And it was like, I didn't care about baseball at that moment. All I cared about what was going on at home. I was FaceTiming up until game time. I would go into the game, pitch, get back. Jada wasn't sleeping at all. So I'd FaceTime all day long. So I'm on my phone all day long. Um, miserable, miserable. But I just keep getting save after save after save. Make the all-star team. Jada starts getting a little bit better. She's like, hey, I'm going to come out in August. Comes out in August. Now talk is already starting to talk like, hey, you're going to possibly break this record. Like I have, you know, 30 saves at the all-star break with a 0. 0.0 something RA. It's literally a joke. Like I'm going out there, it's like video, playing video games. Um, and I remember them getting there and she's like, wow, you're having a really good season. I said, yeah, I have no, I have no idea how I'm doing this, by the way. Um, at, at this point, my faith is so strong where I'm doing Bible studies online with my church back at home. My pastor's really involved in everything that's going on. And I remember her getting there and this burden was like released where now I'm going to the field smiling, happy, and it just got even better. So I get to September. Now you play longer there season-wise because you have so many off days, like your season ends usually in October. I get to like the beginning of September and I'm at the save, I'm at like tying the save record like two games away. And they're like, well, you're definitely gonna break the save record. Now we're thinking you might get like 60 saves or 70 saves. I'm like, 143 games, there's no way I'm gonna save half of them. Come around, boom, save record, get it. I got my 200 save, I got, you know, I get to, you know, 40 or 46 save, 47 save, and then I get to 50th save, and we got like a month left. And they're like, damn, you can't keep pitching at this rate. You know, we got the playoffs where this is by far the best team and season we've had together as a team. We clinched in, in early September that year. I uh, ended up getting up to 54 saves and um, with a 1.05 ERA, a hundred and some strikeouts to like seven or eight walks, just ridiculous numbers that you couldn't you know, emulate again if you wanted to. Um, and they just were so happy with me. We get to the playoffs and it was just an amazing experience. We get through the first round, second round, we go to the Japan series. I ended up getting named MVP of the Japan series. And then after that, they tell me, hey, you're going to be MVP of the season. And then you're gonna be the Shiriki Award winner. And I'm like, well, I don't even know what the Shiriki Award is. They're like, it's never been given to a foreign player before. It was something that's given to someone that gives back to the game more than just on the field. And you know, my wife and I had raised money for another disaster happen and uh, Hasegawa hitter, a well-known hitter, superstar, uh, won the batting title a few times, comes up to me, he goes, I, you know, through my interpreter, then he's like, why do you care so much about Japanese people? And I said, I, it's, it's not about Japanese people, I care about people. I said, when someone's hurting, it's God tells me that I need to help others. And so he, he took that and he was like, okay, you know, like, I was accepted. Like now I was, I, I, at that point I'm Japanese. Like I, they, they always said, Denny's you Japanese. So I had add all the accolades, MVP, six time world champion in Japan baseball. All of that that I won growing up meant nothing. I was empty inside. I had no hope. I had no hope in what the world was gonna come about, what I was gonna be. I was apart from God apart from God. I, had, I knew that there was a God, but why did I need him? Jesus came into my life, opened my eyes, changed my heart, and he was that bridge that brought me. He was the mediator. He took away my sins. He made me whole again. My desire is now is to serve, is to serve God and his kingdom. You can have that too. You can have it by the way you talk to others. You can have it in your faith growing in the Bible. You must read the Bible. You can't consider yourself a Christian and not be in God's word. It's like a man who looks in the mirror and then turns away and forgets what he looks like. You have to continue to be in, in God's word. It's not about giving God a chance. God is drawing you to him. 
Romans says that we are depraved, that we are apart from God, that he gives us up to a debased mind. Christ is what gives us a new life. Christ is what brings us back to God. Trust in Christ. I'm Dennis Sarfate, and I play for him.